news. American forces are preparing the bodies of more than 400 Jonestown, Guyana cult members for return to the United States. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. The Americans are doing their grim work wearing gas masks because of the growing danger of cholera at the jungle commune. From Georgetown, Guyana, CBS News correspondent Steve Young has a report. Since their death by poison Saturday, the victims of the Jonestown Suicide Pact have been lying in the steamy jungle where they fell. A joint U.S.-Guyanese news conference announced tonight that the first 40 bodies finally have been processed and helicoptered to the airport outside the Guyanese capital. It's expected that they'll be flown out of the country in the next few hours. Officials were unwilling to be pinned down to how long it will take to evacuate all of the bodies of the remaining victims. Repeatedly, officials came under fire from dozens of reporters convinced that stumbling blocks to on-scene coverage have been established in order to cover something up. U.S. officials denied that and also denied that less than friendly political relations between the U.S. and Guyanese government have led to less than full Guyanese cooperation with the operation. Many of the questions were openly scornful of what many reporters from around the world judged to be a higher priority given to evacuating the dead than to searching for possible living survivors. Steve Young, CBS News, Georgetown, Guyana. Authorities there have arrested Larry Layton, a 32-year-old cult member, and charged him with the murder of Congressman Leo Ryan and four other Americans in the Ryan party. The San Francisco Examiner says an eyewitness has named seven cult members as being in the ambush team that killed Ryan and the others. More news in a moment. I know what you're going to say. Here's Tony Randall again with still another commercial for Matus Rosé. Well, yes and no. I discovered something, friends, rather disturbing, and I must share it with you. I found out that many people don't even know there is a white Matus wine. Well, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Being something of a wine aficionado myself, I assumed everyone knew about white Matus, the bright imported wine with a captivating charm all its own. But it seems that the rosé is so popular, whenever people hear the name Matus, they automatically think rosé. Imagine all the white wine lovers who thought there was no Matus for them. Oh, the rejection they must have felt. Now, I know you've already stocked up on Matus Rosé for the holidays, but you're going to have to go out and get a bottle or two of white Matus for your white wine lovers. For heaven's sake, haven't they suffered enough? Well, that's all I have to say on the subject. White Matus, imported by Dreyfus Ashby and Company, New York, New York. President Carter today placed a telephone call to President Sadat of Egypt to urge Sadat to accept a compromise American proposal for an Egyptian-Israeli peace treaty. One report on the call says Mr. Carter urged Sadat to agree to elections in the Palestinian West Bank and the Gaza Strip within a year and drop the short-range election timetable the Israelis have rejected. Officially, the State Department is saying the United States expects negotiations between Israel and Egypt to continue. White House inflation fighter Alfred Kahn appeared today before a House banking subcommittee to say that the effort is going to be a long one. Kahn said the entire country will have to cooperate as inflation is hurting everyone. There's nothing in this country today that is doing more to rend the fabric of our society than inflation itself. And there's no use of our resources, no protection of special interests, however meritorious, that can be exempt from the closest possible examination in our struggle to combat it. Khan, incidentally, appears to have been engaging in an involuntary act of reducing government spending. For about three weeks in his new job, he was not being paid. Somebody forgot to put him on the payroll, Khan said. I discovered yesterday my bank account is overdrawn. Senator Edward Kennedy and members of his family went to Arlington National Cemetery today and placed yellow roses on the graves of Kennedy's two slain brothers, John and Robert. It was 15 years ago today in Dallas that President John Kennedy was assassinated. Now this. Our guest today, Mr. Selwyn Searle, yes. is an advertising agency radio expert. Yes, I still have my original floor model. Mm -hmm. Is it true the average household has almost six radios? True, the average... 
That man? Yes. What do you like on radio, Mr. Searle? Goldfish bowl looks nice. Uh, Unless, of course, the fish is dead, then I recommend a bowling <clears throat> trophy. I mean, what it's advertising nice. campaigns do you like on radio? Uh, like Oxy-5 became the number one skin treatment item in America with a big assist from radio. Is that a fact? Or take Mailgram. Yes, take Mailgram. Radio was the dominant medium in establishing Mailgram as the forerunner of electronic mail. Electronic mail. Mm -hmm. Or Time Magazine. Time, yes. Mm -hmm. Since they began their current radio campaign, Time Magazine's advertising and circulation revenue have never been higher. I've heard times. Yes, uh, uh, they were created by Dick and Jane. Uh, love their books. Uh, Bert. Jane and Bert love their books too. Yeah, Mr. Searle, either A, you're an imposter, or B, you know nothing about radio. Ah, uh, I choose A. What? I'm sorry. What is B again? Oh. To learn how radio can sell for you, ask this station for the Radio Fact Book, furnished by the Radio Advertising Bureau. A Baptist minister from Marshall, Texas today ended an unusual feat that lasted for two and a half years. Hans Mulliken crawled on his knees for 1,600 miles to the gates of the White House, where he was turned away in his quest to see President Carter. Mulliken said he just wanted to shake the president's hand and tell him he's praying for him. Asked why he made the long journey by crawling, Mulliken said, I just wanted to show America that we need to get on our knees and repent. He added with a smile, a lot of people think I'm crazy. Doug Poling, CBS News. KQV News Time, 10.06. The weather forecast for the Pittsburgh area. Cloudy tonight right through Friday with occasional rain on Thursday and Thursday night. It's possible the rain may begin late tonight. We'll have an overnight low tonight in the upper 30s in the Pittsburgh area. High tomorrow near 50 Thanksgiving Day. Low tomorrow night in the low 40s. There's a chance of more showers again on Friday. Friday's high in the upper 40s. Chance of precipitation 30% tonight, up to 80% tomorrow and tomorrow night. The extended outlook calls for partly cloudy skies on Saturday. Chance of more showers back again on Sunday. Highs in the 40s with lows from the upper 20s to mid 30s each day. Right now in Pittsburgh, the barometer is steady at 30.26 inches of mercury. Winds are from the northeast at 7 miles per hour. Relative humidity, 82%. At the airport, cloudy skies, 39 degrees. In downtown Pittsburgh, cloudy as well. And we have a temperature of 40. Now, CBS Mystery Theater. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Has God forgotten all I have done for him? exclaimed an exasperated King Louis XIV on an unhappy day when his army was defeated in battle. We may smile at such a remark, but we might do better to learn from it, because it teaches us that there are people in this world who expect to be paid in full for every kindness they extend, and that there comes a day when they will present the bill to everyone and anyone whether here below or up above. Now, Miss uh, uh, Morrison, what can I do for you? Nothing. I've come here to save your life. I had no idea it was in danger. A man intends to kill you. His name is Anthony Pringle. What did you say his name was? Anthony Pringle. But I'm Anthony Pringle. I know. But that doesn't change anything. <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Gray Slapper, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Carol Titel and Gordon Heath. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablet? No, it relieves headache and congestion, internal sinus pressure, and post-nasal drip. And it has added strength. You mean added strength sign-off. Exactly. Added strength sign-off tablets give you pure aspirin plus 50% more sinus drainer. To help sinus pain while you drain. Right. And more sinus drier for post-nasal drip. Added strength sign-off. The sinus medicine in the bright red box. Take when needed, only as directed. S-I-N-D-O-F-F. -F. Sign-off. 
can't beat the clock, and right now the clock is running against us. Every 60 seconds, another American is diagnosed diabetic. Today, 10 million Americans have diabetes. A newborn child runs a 20% chance of developing diabetes during its lifetime. It's time to cure diabetes, and it's time we all help. Take a minute. Call your local American Diabetes Association. I'm Jesse Owen, and I thank you. Hi, I'm KC of the Sunshine Band for the American Heart Association. You know, when you're young, we learn a lot of things. A lot of good things and some things that aren't so good. What's important is to be able to tell the difference. I'll give you an example. Some kids, when they're still pretty young, learn how to smoke cigarettes. They see their folks doing it or their friends tell them it's cool. But the fact is, it's not cool at all. It's dumb. Cigarette smoking is dumb. It cuts down on your wind. It spoils the taste of your food. Worst of all, the American Heart Association says it's bad for your heart. So if somebody offers you a cigarette, remember, there's nothing cool about putting a hot stick of tobacco in your mouth. If you want to find out more about cigarette smoking and what's wrong with it, ask your American Heart Association. They're fighting for your life. You can remember a song that went H A R R I G A N spells Harrigan. You're not as young as you used to be. There was also a saloon called Harrigan's, and there still is. Except old John Joseph Harrigan has gone to his reward, but there is a grandson named John Joseph still among us. And this watering place, as he likes to call it, was the home away from home for all the leading politicians in this beautiful town. Indeed. There were cynical people who insisted that every night the city was for sale in Harrigan's. At any rate, not too long ago, on a particular balmy evening, a slim, well-dressed lady, neither young nor old, approached the bar. Of course, ladies have never been exactly encouraged in Harrigan's, even in these days. They do play the devil with a man's privacy. Good evening, ma'am. Yes, good evening. Permit me to state, ma'am, that while you are as welcome as the very air we breathe, I must ask you to sit down at a table. Why? As to the why of it, we have a house rule. Unescorted female ladies are not permitted at the bar. Well, I'm only looking for someone. Yes? Yes, that, uh, that rather distinguished-looking gentleman at the end of the bar with the white hair and the trim, neat moustache. Oh, Mr. Pringle. Ah, oh, yes. Anthony Edmund Pringle. Do you know Mr. Pringle? I know him very well indeed. Excuse me, Mr. Harrigan. Uh, Mr. Pringle? Yes? I'm Dolly Morrison. Oh. Do I know you, Mrs. Morrison? Miss Morrison. Oh. You assumed quite naturally that a woman of advanced age must be married. I would hardly say you're of advanced age. Thank you, but I am closer to winter than to spring. Shall we say Indian summer? Thank you again. And now what may I do for you, Miss Morrison? Do for me? Yes, of course. Oh, you think I've approached you for a favor? Well, yes. A political favor. All favors are political. Yes, that's the moralist in you speaking. Oh, it's been a long time since anyone called me a moralist. Didn't you say once that politics is a matter of morality? Did I ever say that? I remember it so well. You said those who would separate politics from morality could never hope to truly understand or practice either. I think I remember. Do you also remember without morality... The people perish. Yes. But how do you remember? I never forgot. It's been so many years. And you don't remember Dolly Morrison? Dolly Morrison. The rather pale, dark-haired girl who sat in the front row? When I was teaching? Yes. When you were teaching political science at the city university. Of course. At night? Yes. At night. I remember... You were all such good students. We had to be. 
We worked during the day. College wasn't much fun for you, was it? Well, at least it was college. And we were ahead of our parents, most of us. They had to go to night school. We were going to night college. Miss Morrison. Dolly Morrison. We didn't have time to learn leisurely to savor knowledge. What we needed so desperately were those pieces of paper, those documents which said we could go to law school or become teachers or accountants. Yes, I knew that. It was cut and dried and very intense. And now and then, some of us were lucky enough to encounter a teacher with the, the gift to inspire and... Oh, Miss Morrison, you must let me buy you a drink. No, no, thank you. Then, Miss Morrison, ask me. Ask. Say it, whatever it is. Day and night I am beset by those who seek my favors. Mr. Pringle, I don't think you understand. I understand perfectly. You are a proud woman, and asking a favor does not come without effort. But ask. And if it is within my power, I shall joyfully... What is it you want? An introduction? A job? Perhaps a smoothing of a path? An easing of a pressure. Is that what you think I want? I am completely at your service. You're not listening to me. Of course I am. I did not come here to ask for a favor. You didn't. Is that what you thought? <laughs> of course. What else could I think? What else could you want? What else? Yes, Miss Morrison. What do you want? Right now, I want to do just this. Say, what's the idea? Goodbye, Mr. Pringle. Hey, hey, ma'am, you, you can't... Tony, you want me to call a cop? Dugan's just outside. No. No, John. Never mind. Let her go. What sort can she be? She come in here and it appeared butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. What'd she slap you for? Uh, was it uh, the usual reason? John... She didn't slap me for any reason that I know of. And now for some jottings from here and there and everywhere. He Who Gets Slapped. Yes, that's the title of a famous Russian play. And it's also descriptive of a little by-play that took place last evening at Harrigan's, where you find the movers and shakers of our great city. The receiver of the slap, or the slappy was perhaps the fastest mover and the hardest shaker in town, Tony Pringle. The slapper was an attractive lady, dressed in gray, who disappeared immediately. When pressed for details, Tony Pringle maintained what can be described as either a gallant or a discreet silence. Oh, turn him off, And John. now for the... Have you seen the papers, Tony? I've seen the papers. The fourth estate is having itself a veritable jubilee. Here's Mullins in the Tribune. Who is the great slapper? A catchy phrase. The grey slapper. Mm -hmm. It'd be the making of Mullins, too. Therefore, he'll be grateful to me. Uh, no. He'll be out to put you in prison. Mullins? After all I've done for him? Oh, I'm surprised to hear you say that, Tony. You should know better. Friend Mullins will become all puffed up with his own self-importance. And so he'll no longer be satisfied with being just a reporter, heaven help us. He'll want to become a journalist and win the Pulitzer Prize. He'll start muckraking and whistleblowing and making a general nuisance out of himself. Mullins? It's the first noteworthy thing he's ever reported. I cannot imagine why that woman would want to slap my face. Are you still telling me you do not know who she is? It goes back many years. I was teaching school. She was one of my students. Ah, oh, and did you give her a failing mark? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I gave her the highest mark in the class. Ah, you know women. i tell you what I'll do, Tony. I'll say she just wandered in here, drunk. And before I could ask her to leave, she made a spectacle of herself. I... I don't know what... You don't need this kind of embarrassing situation. Besides, she had to be drunk. How else can you explain it? Yes? Oh. Oh. It's...
it's you. Yes. A gray slapper. I'm not dressed in gray. Oh? Have you decided to become the red slapper? May I come in? If you promise not to slap me again. No. I didn't come here for that purpose. For what purpose have you come? I've come here to save your life. Oh? I can see you don't believe me. I have an idea I'm going to hate myself, but... All right. Come in. <laughs> Very nice little place you have here. Far from the madding crowd's ignoble strife. <laughs> How did you know where to find me? Very few people know about this place. You told me about it. I told you. An important man like you, constantly surrounded? You need this little hideaway. Miss Morrison, you insist on talking in riddles, in creating mystery. First, you say you've come here to save my life. Second, you say I told you about this little retreat of mine. Now, I insist that you illuminate both of these points for me. I shall. But first, why did you tell the media I was drunk? I didn't tell them. You permitted a lie to be told. There had to be some explanation for your gratuitous action. But it wasn't true. I was not drunk. What's the difference? The difference is, you slandered me. You told a lie. Miss Morrison, what do you want of me? You were willing to sell my reputation down the river for your own convenience. Can we come to the point? We've never left it. I am here to discuss what you have become. And what you did to me is very much in character. I would have done nothing to you had you not slapped me. Now, why did you do it? Because I... I had to come there to try to save you. And you were so blind, so deaf. Blind and deaf to what? What happened to you, Mr. Pringle? Stay on the point. How are you going to save me? It will be very difficult. And from what shall you save me? From whom? From yourself. All right. What is it that I intend to do? Kill yourself. I see. That would be suicide. Technically, I suppose. Miss Morrison, I have absolutely no desire, no thought of doing away with myself. That isn't true. Now I remember you. You were very intense and very attractive. You haven't changed a bit. I have never met a man like you. That is, in real life. Well, I, I did meet men like you in books. Brilliant men. Men who could capture the soul and release the spirit. Are you saying that you fell in love with me? Yes. A schoolgirl crush? I was hardly a schoolgirl. I was out in the world and supporting myself. I'm without false modesty, Miss Morrison. I knew I was good-looking, smart, I had style. I knew most of the girls in my classes would fall in love with me. And most of them would get over it. I never did. I'm sorry. But I couldn't help it. I, I never flirted with any of you. I never tried to lead any of you on. That's true, isn't it? Yes. But you, you awaken me to the world... I'm still Miss Morrison. You ruined all other men for me. I'm sorry. I believed in you. And then you made the inevitable discovery. Your idol has feet of clay. Yes. If you examine them closely, all of them do. I believe you stated the case. Idol. I never saw you as a lover. I always thought of you as an idol. A god. And so perhaps it wasn't love, but worship. Women, as a rule, are <laughs> very susceptible to this kind of thing. <laughs> you must let me offer you some refreshment. <laughs> I'm so happy you came. Are you? You realize what's happening to me? I am actually having a discussion with a civilized, literate human being. Quite a change. From what? We haven't said one word about who's going to get the contract or the nomination or the judgeship. It's quite a change for you, isn't it? We are in the midst of a philosophical conversation which began with theology and shall range through morality and ethics. 
Since we've already discussed poetry, I'm sure we shall treat with literature, art, and music. Yes. You still have the old sparkle. Perhaps the basic instincts can somehow be revived. I said there was hope for you. He, of course, wouldn't hear of it. He? Yes. He claimed the change was irreversible. You say he. But who is he? The man who intends to kill you. But didn't you say, just before, that I'm going to kill myself? Exactly. That's why I'm here. To see if you can help me talk him out of it. At first blush, assuming, of course, that these days there are still people who actually blush, what she is saying doesn't seem to make any sense at all. However, if you think about it, you may divine a certain meaning. Like all mysteries, all you need is a key. The key here is a number, and the number is two. And that's all the hints you get until I return with the second act. I know what you're going to say. Here's Tony Randall again with still another commercial for Matus Rosé. Well, yes and no. I discovered something, friends, rather disturbing, and I must share it with you. I found out that many people don't even know there is a white Matus wine. Well, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Being something of a wine aficionado myself, I assumed everyone knew about White Matus, the bright imported wine with a captivating charm all its own. But it seems that the rosé is so popular, whenever people hear the name Matus, they automatically think rosé. Imagine all the white wine lovers who thought there was no Matus for them. Oh, the rejection they must have felt. Now, I know you've already stocked up on Matus Rosé for the holidays, but you're going to have to go out and get a bottle or two of white Matus for your white wine lovers. For heaven's sake, haven't they suffered enough? Well, that's all I have to say on the subject. White Matus, imported by Dreyfus Ashby and Company, New York, New York. This is Irma Bombeck. What if I told you Ernest Hemingway, William Faulkner, and John Steinbeck lived in your neighborhood? What if I told you you could get a handyman who made house calls? free entertainment for your children, or check out Paul Newman for seven days. Trust me, all these things are possible at your public library. It houses one of the most complete lines of interest you'll find anywhere. Check out a how-to book for your husband on making minor repairs around the house. Or if he doesn't like fiction, select one of his favorite sports. For the children, there are story hours and bike repair lessons and concerts. And if you're one of those women who is still trying to plow her way through Guadalcanal Diary, maybe you could use a master speed reading course. Your library could be the most important card in your billfold. I love it. My husband was at the library just last night. And when he came home, he said, Hey, Irma, I was at the library, and all your books are in. That was so cruel. A public service message from the American Library Association. look at some people and we say they never change. But that isn't true. Everybody changes, even if it doesn't seem that way. After all, the scientists say that every six months, 90% of all the atoms in our body are completely replaced. Or is it after 90 months, 6% of us is brand new? What's the difference? The fact is that inside, things are happening. There's action, conflict, nobody, nothing is ever really standing still. Let me see if I can sort this out, Miss Morrison. What you're saying is that you've been having conversations with me. Yes. I, of course, am unaware of these conversations. The you that is in this room is unaware of the conversations. I shall try to follow this. There are times when I am not in this room and I am talking to you. Yes. However, I don't know that this is happening. Therefore, there can only be one explanation. Yes. I am a somnambulist. I walk in my sleep. I seek you out and we talk. That is not the explanation. You mean there's another? Yes. 
I said the you that is in this room is unaware. The you that frequents Harrigan's saloon. The you that stalks the city hall, the state house, the national councils of the party. The you that is the mover, the shaker, the kingmaker. You flatter me. I merely describe you. I describe the you that is unaware. But there's another you. Is there? A 30-year-old you who is eager... Idealistic, honest, decent, hopeful. You are now describing the symptoms of a disease called youth. That's the you I speak with constantly. Oh. I caught that inflection. You think I'm crazy. Well... Admit it. Crazy, normal. These are political definitions. I speak to him quite often. Him? Anthony Edmund Pringle. You probably do. You intend to sound sympathetic, but there is just the tiniest patronizing edge to your voice. Miss Morrison, I sympathize with you. And let me be truthful. This may seem like arrogant boasting. However, when I was young, attractive, I had almost unlimited idealism. I believed in justice, brotherhood, fairness... And you no longer do. I realize that these are not simple, cut-and-dried affairs. I know now that men must give to get. That accommodation is the basic rule of life. That we only pass this way once. But uh, we digress. You fell in love with me. And with what you stood for. What you thought I stood for. And then I went into politics. I was so happy. I thought you would be the first of a new breed. And I disappointed you. Yes. I made excuses for you. I I tried to justify some of the things you did. And after a while, you could do that no longer. After a long while. You had a considerable investment in me, didn't you, Miss Morrison? An investment of hope and emotion. Yes. And now it was lost. All of it. Yes. And so, since you could no longer tolerate what I had become, a cheap, cynical politician, you conjured up what I had been, the young idealist. This is what you believe? The 30-year-old Anthony Edmund Pringle, lecturer in the humanities at the City University, actually exists for you. You believe you'll see him and speak to him. How glibly you can spout the mail order, do-it-yourself, instant psychology, so popular and so meaningless. If the young Tony still exists, if it's true that you see him and talk with him, tell him he cannot complain. If he doesn't like what he has become today, he himself chose the path. Only because you fooled him, you lied to him. Miss Morrison... Yes. I don't wish to be rude, but I must ask you to leave. Of course. I realize this has been difficult for you, but Tony is desperate. Please, Miss Morrison. Listen to me. Tony intends to kill you unless... Unless what? Unless I can convince him not to. I'm powerless without your help. You must make him believe that you can actually change... Tony despises what he has become in you. Let me tell him things will be different. All right. Do that. Don't. Don't make the mistake of humoring me, of patronizing me. Tony is serious. And the latest piece of, uh, of sheer, uh, what, what can I say? Deviltry you propose? Deviltry? Yes, deviltry. This monstrous betrayal of the public trust... What else can be can it be called if not deviltry? There are any number of words you might have used. Why deviltry? And what are you talking about? Please consider what I said. It's not too late. Welcome, stranger. Nice quiet evening, John. I must say you're not looking well, Tony. What have you been doing? Thinking. Oh, dangerous pastime. When you were young, John, what did you want to become? When I was young, no one ever asked me. What did you want for yourself? As soon as I could walk, 
I had to assist my old gentleman in the running of this here oasis. Is that what the young John Joseph Harrigan wanted? To tend bar and saloon? Yes, that's what the young John Joseph wanted. Then, today, if he confronted you, he would have no quarrel with what you are. None. Is this leading to where I may safely assume it is? Yes. I see. Well, uh, is the young Anthony Edmund Pringle disturbing the peace of mind of the older one who stands here before me? In the confidentiality of this bar, I confess that the young Tony and I are not at peace with each other. Mm. What's the trouble, Tony? Who said there was any trouble? You're a thinking man. And thinking has been the ruination of many a politician. I remember you when you come into this place for the first time, 30 years ago. You had the common touch. He'll go far, I said. And you did. Mm, did I? You know you did. What were you, a teacher? You've been just fine for the party, Tony. And unlike a lot of them, you haven't been too bad for the people. You haven't done any real harm to the country, as far as I can see. But what have I been for me? Each man answers that question for himself. If he dares. Tony, what's wrong? Why do you ask? It has something to do with that woman, doesn't it? What woman? Now you're pretending not to know. The grey slapper. Oh, what would she have to do with anything? You tell me. Well, of course you don't have to. But uh, ever since that incident, something seems different about you. Different? In what way? Well, you're kind of moody. And sometimes you seem to be in another world. Some of the boys was remarking about it. Why did she slap you? Why? Because she was disappointed in me. Does she have a right to be? She thinks she does. Have you read Mullen in today's Tribune? Mullen's been bitten by the bug. Pay no heed. Promise betrayed the story of Anthony Edmund Pringle. Tony, when you can quote these things by heart, it's a bad sign. What has become of the eager, dewy-eyed Anthony Edmund Pringle, who 30 years ago entered the lists? A St. George to slay the dragon of corruption that strangles the life from the city. Has he become the dragon? And by the same token, we might inquire, what has become of young Jimmy Mullins, who is going to write the great American novel? Why is he only a reporter on a second-rate newspaper? That's unfair. Fairness is a matter of post positions at the racetrack. Tony, you're a successful man. You've worked very hard. That's true. You haven't done everything you wanted, but who has? And there's an empty place in your heart. Yes. You played the game. You were interested in nothing else. And now you're 60, and all you have is the game. No wife, no kids. You're lonely. Yes. But that's the normal way to feel. Don't make more of it. I suppose you're right. It's easy for a man to feel down, to question. But then the thing to do is just go straight ahead. Straight ahead. That's been you all your life, Tony. You can't change your style now. No. Millions of people know about Tony Pringle. Millions of people will give anything to be where Tony Pringle is. Ah, this is an invention of the devil. Hello. Is Mr. Pringle there? Who is this that wishes to speak with him? Tell him it's Miss Morrison. Uh, please, hold the telephone. You want to speak with a Miss Morrison? No. I'm very sorry, ma'am, but he's not here. This is very important. Tell him, please, that under no conditions is he to be part of the deal with Mr. Dahlgren. What? What is that you said? Uh, ma ma what did you say? Uh, hello, hello. John, what's wrong? I, uh... 
I don't know. This Miss Morrison, what did she want? Tony, who is she? Who is Miss Morrison? She's just some lady. Tony, do you know whose name she just spoke? No. The name, Tony, the name. What do you mean, the name? She said it. How could she? How would she know about it? Tell me exactly what she said. She said, and these are her exact words, tell him that under no conditions is he to be part of a deal with... And then she spoke the name. Hey, Tony, where are you going? It seems there's a name... And it seems there's a deal. And it also seems that there is great concern about various people finding out about it. And since this seems to be a story about politicians, it would appear that this is only more politics as usual. Or is it? Well, that's why we have third acts. Take your contact. Take it now. Take your cold to contact. I'm going to change your mind about nighttime cold medicine. You see, of all major medicines, only one works up to 12 hours against the cloggy virus symptoms that keep you awake. Only contact. One capsule's relief stays with you all through a long night's sleep, no matter what cold virus attacks. Only contact. Take your cold to contact. Take only as directed. When you carry Master Charge, you carry Pops. Love to go Christmas shopping, even after a full day at the office. Thing is, I hate carrying all that cash. Sometimes I think I need an armored car. Not this Christmas. I'm shopping differently. Thanks, Master Charge. It's so easy when all you have to carry is your clothes. When you carry Master Charge, you carry clothes. If you are blind or know someone who is, listen to this message. There is a unique, specially prepared monthly sports magazine for the visually impaired. Feeling Sports, a service of the Braille Sports Foundation. It is written and produced exclusively for sports-minded individuals who want to be in close touch with the sports world and with organized athletic programs for the unsighted. Feeling Sports is offered in two forms, in Braille or on cassette tapes. I'm Ray Scott. And for the last three years, it's been my pleasure to be the cassette voice of Feeling Sports, reading amazing and inspiring articles about blind people who participate in various sports such as beat baseball, golf, and many others. For a sample copy, contact the Braille Sports Foundation, room 301, 730 Hennepin Avenue, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55403. Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55403. Feeling Sports is available free of charge to physically handicapped persons unable to afford the cost. Sang the poet, My secrets cry aloud. I have no need for tongue. My heart keeps open house. My doors are widely flung. Yes, that's the attitude of the poet. The politician is another case, however. His secrets must be silent, his door closed, his window shuttered. His theme is expressed in a word that poets have absolutely no use for. Discretion. It's you. We have to talk. About what? About a certain name you mentioned. We better not talk here. Why not? Because I'm expecting him. Expecting who? You know who. Let's end this charade. I'm coming in. He'll kill you if he finds you here. Answer this question. Who told you about Dahlgren? I'm trying to help you. Get away from here. Who told you? Does it matter? Tell me who told you. You did. I did. He did. What's the difference? Tell me the truth. Tell me or... Or what? What do you know about Dahlgren? He's a... a senator. Yes. What else do you know? I know that you and he 
have been on opposite sides for years. You've been bitter enemies. What else do you know? Now, I suppose I know everything. What's everything? You are going to support him for the nomination. Yes. He won't let you do it. Anthony Edmund Pringle won't let you do it. I've had enough. I am Anthony Edmund Pringle. Somehow, you got this information. No. There's an Anthony Edmund Pringle who is 30 years old, and he'll kill you before you bring him to this ultimate disgrace. What ultimate disgrace? What's wrong with what I'm doing? Dahlgren is a scoundrel. He's not the only one. But he's the worst, and for you to back him is the most cynical... What do you know about it? Please, I want to help you. I have a very, very angry young man to pacify. But you have to help me. You just disavow this, this Dahlgren person. I can't. Why? Because when you get to be where I am, you can't stand still. You must go forward. You have to be with the winner. Dahlgren will be the winner. Who's that? It's probably Anthony Edmund Pringle. Hello? Yes? No. He's... He's not here. I don't know where he is. Yes. As soon as I find out. Goodbye. He knows about Dahlgren. What? Everybody knows about Dahlgren. It's in the papers. It's on the news. It's impossible. Would you like to hear it? Gentlemen, we are still with our special newscast concerning the greatest political bombshell of the decade, the Pringle-Dahlgren Alliance. It all came to the surface as a result of a story in the Tribune by veteran reporter James Mullen. Mullen? These two former sworn enemies prove that anything is possible in the political arena. And as a team, now they're virtually unbeatable. As Mullen notes, there is, of course, a little matter of morality. But that won't bother too many people. Shut it off. Have you heard enough? Mullen. It's the truth. Of course. Why should Dahlgren and I destroy each other? Doesn't it make sense to join forces? But how did Mullen find out? This wasn't supposed to break for another month. Call the broadcasting stations, the press. Hold a conference, say it isn't true. In that way, he'll forgive you. You claim I told you. Yes, you did. Whatever it is, whatever game you're trying to play, it's not going to work. You know... You're an interesting lady. Oh, no. <laughs> no, not that. Not now. Years ago, there would have been a, a point to it. A home, children, a whole life we might have made together. Now it's too late. And I don't like your newest friends. You're a very positive woman. That's your problem. And you're very convincing. That's my problem. You have a way of talking. It can almost make a man believe anything. Even this nonsense you've tried to peddle me about a young edition of myself that is still making the rounds. He intends to kill you. I confess I, I let it get to me somewhat. But it's because I've been under a strain. Well, it has been extremely interesting. And now, if you don't mind... I must leave. Fight, Dahlgren. Fight him. We have just become blood brothers. That should cement our relationship for at least this one campaign. It's the only way Anthony Edmund Pringle can be made to respect you. Good night, Miss Morrison. When I think of what might have been... Well, the word's out. Did the earth shake? Briefly. <laughs> and then? And then, people said words like master stroke. Brilliant strategy. Terrific tactics. Natural allies. Ah, you see, it has now become the normal and accepted state of affairs. And what do you think? As a friend, 
I would not have done it. I needed that big dramatic move. Of course. But you could have done better than Dahlgren. He was available. Time was not on my side. Well, what's done is done. Uh, Tony. Yes. There was a fellow in here looking for you. Uh, what was his name? He didn't say. Lots of folks are looking for me all the time. Yes. There is something different about this one. In what way? Uh, this may be a somewhat uh, delicate question, Tony. Did you ever have a son? John, I've never been married. You understand that is not a direct answer. The direct answer is no. The reason I say this, the fellow was about 25 or 30, and he was a dead ringer for you. He was? A carbon copy in every respect. The difference? He's half a lifetime younger and thinner, but he was you as you looked at the time. And I remember. He asked for me. Yes. Wanted to know if you were here. What did you tell him? What could I tell him? You weren't in. Then what did he do? I don't know. Try to remember. He... He just disappeared into the crowd. He's never been in before. No. Tony, is something wrong? He looked just like me. The image to the line. And he's looking for me. Yes, I just said he was. Tony, there's something wrong. I know it. I have to. I should get away for a bit. I would certainly say so. I know I need a rest. You do. Where it's quiet, where nobody knows me, where nobody could find me. But where is such a place? Well... I have a little lodge up on the coast of Maine. Nobody's using it right now. John, I couldn't. I... You want to go where no one can find you? Here. I'll give you the keys. Don't go. You? What are you doing here? Don't go. Don't go where? To Maine. How do you know I'm going to? He told me. Listen. He's already gone there. He's waiting for you. Don't go yet. Let me talk to you first. What is there we can talk about? Besides, we, we can't talk here. Too many people will recognize you me. You have to listen to me. All right. Let's go to your place. the alliance with Dahlgren? I told you that's impossible. Why? Because I'm committed. I had to cut some throats to do this. I suppose you did. They would just as quickly have cut mine. Anyhow, there are certain breaches that cannot be healed at this time. Then I cannot help you. You must. Tell him. What can I tell him? Tell him how hard it was for me to just be a school teacher. Yes. Tell him that one morning you wake up and you suddenly realize you can have everything. I'll tell him. Tell him it's a drug. A drug? Power. It's the deadliest drug of all. The more you have of it, the more you need. And you can't give any of it up. You can't. I'll tell him. I know how he feels. I was like him once. You weren't like him. You were him. I can't change. I can't go back. I know it. And he knows it. And that's why he has to kill you. No, please. Don't start that again. Because you have made nothing of his life. Nothing. I'm one of the most powerful people in this country. What have you done with his life? You filled it with, with, with tobacco smoke and tinsel. You've packed it with broken promises, with, with greed and corruption. You have become prosperous by bringing out the worst in other men. No. No, you will have to die. Oh, no, no. Do you think I'll stand by and let him kill me? Who's that? You know who it is. Do you think I'll just stand still and let him kill me? I'm armed. I have a gun. See? Look. It won't help you. Let him in. Who does he think he is? Let him in. This insufferable two-bit philosopher. He would have been different. He would have been able to withstand temptation. 
Did anyone ever tempt him? Let him in. I'm not afraid. Come on in. Let's look at you, Tony. You dare to look down on me. I've played golf with billionaires. I played poker with presidents. Look at you. In your threadbare trousers, patches on your corduroy sleeves. Look at me. Look at what I did for you. Thank me. Thank me. Wait. No. Don't look at me like that. Don't. Keep away. I'll shoot. I swear, I'll shoot. And now for the news. We know who the gray slapper is. She's Miss Dolly Morrison. This evening, Anthony Edmund Pringle, companion of presidents, confidant of kings, and counselor to billionaires, was shot to death by her hand in her apartment. Evidently, it was a romance of long standing. The place is filled with his pictures, stories, and books about his long career. These things happened. He tired of her. She slapped him in public and later killed him. They say, cherchez la femme. And in this case, we found her. You want to know what I think? I would say there was more here than meets the eye. But exactly what it is, I cannot tell you. Ah, how about another? On the house. As usual in these affairs, we give a multitude of possibilities. The first is the story we tell you, that his own youth killed him. Of course, it's possible that Dolly could have been playing a game, or even John Harrigan, or Tony's political enemies. Or have you been inspired to come up with a solution of your own? This is all to the good, and we shall talk about it shortly. Isn't it nice to know that in almost 300 different well, I didn't see it over here, but now I'm welcome waiting for you under the big, bright, sunburst sign of Quality Inns. You'll always find comfortable rooms at very comfortable prices. That's what makes Quality Inns the most comfortable place under the sun. See your travel agent or call us toll-free for reservations. Quality the most comfortable place under the sun. Quality Inns. When I have a sore throat, I don't feel like myself. My throat feels raw and irritated. That's when I use chloroseptic. Chloroseptic helps me feel better because it helps block the pain of a sore throat. So when you get a sore throat, don't let it slow you down. Get relief with chloroseptic and feel like yourself again, fast. Chloroseptic spray or lozenges for temporary relief of minor sore throat pain. Use only as directed. Do you have a sight problem that prevents you from reading? Hi, this is Max Morath with news about Choice Magazine Listening, a free service of the nonprofit Lucerna Fund. Six times yearly, Choice Magazine Listening brings you eight hours of selections from leading publications on phonograph records. For information about a free subscription, write Listening Box 10, Port Washington, New York, 11050. Remember, it's free. So write Listening Box 10, Port Washington, New York, 11050. Consider some basic premises. If you are 50, what became of the you that was 25? Ah, you say, he grew older. But how can you prove it? 
Are we one person who ages, or are we an infinite multitude of people who live for a day, or a week, or a year, and are then replaced? Impossible? Really? How many times have you said of somebody, why, he's simply not the same person? Our cast included Carol Titel, Gordon Heath, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.